Okay, now another aesthetic change we want to make here is the paragraph letting. Now in desktop publishing, it's known as a letting, but in the web world in HTML, it's known as line height. I just want to change the line height of the paragraphs. Paragraphs specifically for main content. So as an example, I already have a P for paragraph for the entire site. We just want to change the P when P is inside of main content. So select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. So we're just going to say main content P. Main content P line height is going to be 1.65 m spaces and m space is equal to the height of the letter m of a capital m for your typeface so as an example if your body copy was 10 pixels this would now be 16 percent bigger or 16.5 pixels so an m space is a height that is equal to the height of a capital m so it's a relative thing i do things M space for line height for floating to the left. When I float to the left, I do margin space to the right in M spaces. I also do paragraph at the bottom of the paragraph in M spaces. It makes total logical sense to do it that way. If the apply options, you now you can see there's more space between lines per paragraph. Again, desktop publishing, this is known as letting, but in the HTML world, it's known as line height. We're going to make this slightly bigger. We can say point at Eight, five M spaces. So it just puts more space between my paragraphs. But in this particular case, it didn't affect the paragraph for the branding tag. It didn't affect the paragraph for anything else but the main content tag. Now you should order these, arrange these, these rules in the way that they appear. So main content P. So this is aesthetically a good logical setup here. Wrapper followed by branding, followed by sidebar, followed by main content. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Now these two div tags should technically go right there. Now it's still going to work the same way, but you just want this to flow the way the document was built. So it's a very important step here. Okay, so let's now put in our site navigation content. So we're going to double click here. We're going to put in the word about return price return products return contact. Now, notice I typed in lowercase. Good habit to get into lowercase, no space. If you have to use space, well, in this particular case, you can put in space, but for document naming, you want to do lowercase, no space. If you have to put space, you put in the hyphen or the underscore. Now, eventually, I want to make this capital A, capital P, capital P, capital C, but I'm not going to write it that way. I'm going to do that in my rule structure. I'm going to double click this, come down here to the link dialog box and I'm going to put in the pound symbol. Now if you looked at my previous videos, this is just a placeholder for my hyperlink tag, which is my A tag, which is my anchor tag. Double click, put it in the pound symbol. Now again, I just want to drill this into your heads here. If you put anything but the pound symbol, you're going to get a page error. If you put in two X's, it's going to look for a page called two X's. If you put in the name Jennifer, it's going to look for a page called Jennifer. Okay, you don't want to do that. I just want to simply double click the word and put it the pound symbol. Now, important step here. This, unlike making this a hyperlink, I can make that a hyperlink by putting in the pound symbol. I can make this a hyperlink by putting in the pound symbol. This is just a placeholder hyperlink because the page has not been approved yet. The page will be approved when it becomes a final page. Okay, this is not a final page. This is still the production page with the client has to approve. So these are simply solo hyperlinks by putting in the pound symbol. You can do the same thing with images too. I can select the image and I can put in the pound symbol. Okay. Now in this particular case, this has to be part of an unordered list or an ordered list. The difference being an ordered list has numbers next to it. An unordered list can have whatever you want next to it. In this particular case, I don't want to have anything next to it but i do want this text here to be part of an unordered list by default these are simply paragraphs paragraph 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 we're going to select these paragraphs we can do it here or we can do it inside this mode i'm going to select these paragraphs and put it inside an unordered list if i go down here to my property palette there's two choices ordered list has numbers next to it which we don't want to have Unordered list has dots next to it, which in this particular case is totally acceptable. Okay, the dots are fine. We're gonna get rid of the dots when we create a rule for the unordered list tag. 
So very important step here. If you come down here to your property, to your tag IDs down here, here's the anchor tag. Here's the list item tag. Each list item about price, products, content. We're going to make a rule for unordered list. We're going to select the tag. Now, again, very important step here. Select the tag. Make the rule. Select the tag. Make the rule. Okay, so we're going to select the tag. Unordered list tag. Come over here. Make a rule. Now, again, UL inside of site nav. So that's how we're going to. That's how we're going to create the rule. We're just going to say UL inside of site nav. We're going to OK. Based on these choices here, these choices, dialog box are just filled with choices. We're going to go to list. We're going to change the type to none. So now it's not going to have dots next to it. Make a change. Save a change. OK. Next, we're going to define the A tag. The A tag was defined the second we put in the pound symbol. The A tag's definition was defined when I put in the pound symbol. Right now, the A tag anchor is referencing the pound symbol. Eventually, this is going to reference the about page and the price page and the products page and the contact page. These are just placeholders right now because we're still in design mode. We're still not, this is not the, this is just the prototype right now. This is not the final page. Now, the site nav should appear under site nav, which is up in here. So, site nav on order list. Make a change, save a change. Now, we're going to select the A tag. Select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. And again, it was written exactly like this. A tag inside the list item, inside the unordered list, inside the site nav. Now, in this particular case, what we want to have happen here, we want to make our type white. We want to make our type capitalized. So, so far, I got this happening. Okay, can't see that too well. We'll fix that in a second. We're going to make this no underline, and we're going to put this against a, the opposite of yellow. So we're going to, here's a simple way to do this. We're going to select sample yellow, come here to our color wheel. If this is where yellow lives, then this is yellow's opposite. So we're going to make this the opposite darker version of yellow. Now, very important step here. And this is the way that most, unfortunately, most people go to Photoshop to do this because they don't understand how it works. So if I the apply option right now, it gave a background color to the hyperlinks. But I don't want that to happen. I want to go to block. By default, very important step here, guys. By default, this is being displayed as a line of type. That's how it's being displayed by default. I want to change the box category to the splits as a block of type. That's what I'm looking for. This is the reason why people go into Photoshop to make these hyperlinks. Hyperlinks should be text, searchable text. They should not be graphics. You can have a background graphic that's totally acceptable, but the text itself should be part of a hyperlink text content. So now I, I want to put the type vertically in the center. So how do I do this? I go to my type category, line height. 30 pixels. Now it's going to vertically put the type in the center, vertically up and down. Now for the left, I want to go to box padding and padding from the left. We're going to do one M space. That moves it to the left. Now in addition to this, we want to go to margin. Again, padding's inside the box, margin's outside the box. So margin space outside the box. At the bottom of this, we're going to make this 1.5 M spaces. And there you go. Simple, simple, simple. There's my hyperlink boxes. Now to do the hover, which is helicopter hover when the mouse hovers over, that's a simple task. I select the tag, I select the tag, and I make a rule. Now in this particular case, this is something you have to do from scratch. We're going to use this code set up here. We're going to put in colon, colon, H O V E R. Hover like helicopter hover, not hoover like a vacuum hoover. Hover like helicopter hover. So this is A colon hover. I hit OK. Now its parent tag is the A tag. So the only thing I have to do here is change the background color. So in this particular case, we're going to make this background color be this orange color. So when I hover over, it's going to be orange. Okay. So it's basically Unordered list, A tag, hover tag, inside the site nav tag. 
So if I go to live view right now, I can see my hover tag, hover tag, hover tag, hover tag. Now, if you want to change this to uppercase, very simply, I can go to my rules, double click hover, go to the case and make this uppercase. So you only see the hover tag if you either publish it to your server or you go to live view. So live view, capital, 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 capital. Very simple, make a change, save a change.